Hey, everybody. So our product, the Floracinc, the plant companion, with its cutting edge technology, will be the gardening assistant of everyone around you. We got some big funding now, and now it's time to expand globally. But before we can do this, we need a full redesign of our web shop, of our web app, and both of our mobile apps. So this is an imaginary company and product, but many startups will go through this phase when they are about to become a big corporate company. Problems they already have are going to grow with them, and they are going um, to have new problems popping up, with more people joining the teams. Existing products are going to change, and new products are going to be built. But at the end of the day, everything should feel and look like it was done by the same company. So how can we solve that? I think Floracinc is in need of a design system. So hello, my name is Melanie Freilinger. I'm a software engineer with a strong focus on Android development. And I call myself a creative person, which I also like to reflect in my hair color really often. So you might see me running around in some fancy hair color like blue, pink, whatever comes to my mind. So when I was given the task to implement such a design system, I was really excited because I could help uh, shape the way developers and designers are going to work together in the teams. But where should I start? I never did something that, like this. I only consumed some style libraries or something like material design from Google. So today I want to give you my experiences and then share this with you, what I made on the way. So what is a design system? It is a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. So far, so good, but a little bit more on that later. Before I want to jump into solutions, I want to give you more arguments for why a design system could be a good solution for a scaling and growing company. So Floracinc is a growing company, it's a competitive market, and with the given budget they have, they want to be as efficient as possible. So they have three big design problems. More developers and more designers are going to work on the same product. And naturally, teams will evolve that they will take part, uh, care of just a tiny part of the app, like a discovery page or a search. And soon the design is going to look fragmented, um, like a Tower of Babel design, where every designer speaks their own language. So a design system can, can help to solve consistency, uh, with consistency, and support product identity. A conversation like this happened really often in my career so far. Um, so I got a task to implement a new feature. Um, maybe I just get a screenshot or an outdated sketch file, um, and I'm starting, and okay, what color value do I need to use here? I got a response from the designer, um, yeah, I'm not sure, maybe the one with the alpha value of 50, but I need to check that first. While I'm waiting, I stumble across the next problem, okay, and what spacing do I need to use here? And while we are discussing, my colleague comes around and comes with the color question again. After all this back and forth, and we think we finally fixed everything and everything is done, QA comes along and asks, hey, are you guys sure this is the right color? At the end, this leaves everybody really frustrated and nobody enjoys working like this. So having a design system in place can help to reduce the time if, if inefficiency, which we spend in, in back and forth communication, because it just distracts us from solving real problems, which bring some value to customers. But it could be even worse. So, Similar situation, I get the task for a new feature, and now I get the response, okay, for this feature, please use the button with the big font, which has no background, and the slider dark blue for the text. Okay, I've seen this button already, I have it in my code, I know what it should do. I build a feature, it's shipped. 
But then the app is uploaded, it's out in the stores, and I realize, oh, I have a visual bug inside now. That, that's a lot of um, additional effort. Now I need to go back and fix it and so on. In communication, we often find ourselves to speak about the same things or not, but not being aware of it because we have different names for things. Um, so giving things a unique name helps to shape a shared language between designers and developers. Also, we as engineers are used to different workflows than a design team. We build our code in a reusable and flexible way. Um, it is in a versioning system, so we have a history back later. But that's not really default in the design world. So having a system like this in place helps to shape a mutual understanding and, and work in similar flows. It could be as easy as that. Just use the secondary button. OK, and how can we now bring this all into code? Let's imagine that Fluorescent already has their design ready. They have a Figma file where everything is defined. Let's start with the smallest part first. So the, we have our design tokens, and they represent the smallest um, part. They describe a visual style. They are platform agnostic and just simple key value pairs, like a color value, a topography, um, some sizes. The second part are our components. Those are our re reusable UI components, and they are built with those tokens. So a button has some text, and this text is styled with the typography token. Um, and the components are then used for the overall user interface design. The third important part of our design system is a style dictionary. So as the name indicates, it translates the tokens into the platform-specific formats. Because tokens are stored as a JSON format, and no platform can really read that. So on an Android platform, it would not know that this is now something for, for styling my app. Um, it is a centralized um, repository where all of the platforms get their information from. OK, that's all really nice, but I'm going to show you some code now. OK, so just a simple JSON with some color definitions. They have a value, a name, maybe also a description. And here the style dictionary comes into play. It's our translator, which can um, take this JSON and translate it into some platform-specific format. Uh, like for Android, we would have our resources file with our color definitions in. For the components, on the left side, you can see how that would look like in Figma, for example. So uh, you also build your components in there, so that's more on the designer side. But they are going to use the same tokens as I am going to use in my code base to ensure that the designs really look the same like on design and on my applications. In this case, uh, the translator is often a human, a developer. Of course, there are tools which can automate this process, but in the teams I worked with, this was done by, by engineers. And whatever you decide how to build your UI components, important part is that you use those tokens which we exported before. OK, so I also prepared a small demo app, uh, actually two apps, one for web and one for Android, to show you how this looks in the whole flow. So, so as said, I decided to go with Figma, where our, all of our tokens are um, defined. And let's start with the color styles. I'm going to change some colors. So fluorescent is going from blue to a more violet tone. So changing this. And also the secondary color. So everything still fits together. A slighter, darker version of it. Great. And I'm also not a big fan of this orange color, so I decided to give it a little bit more of a red tone instead. Uh, 
And I also want to show you the um, size token, so going to also do some adaptions here. Those are just simple values, so you can, whatever how your design is going to look like, define them as you need. I'm going to change them from 20 to 30, so just a little increase, but to still see some changes. Also going to adapt the name, so it is reflected afterwards in the code base. And after I'm done with my changes, I'm exporting it directly into my repository, uh, which is possible with the plugin I selected. It's really neat because it can automatically push into my repository. Um, so, saved and shipped. Um, after that, uh, in my repository, a GitHub action is triggered, which is automatically doing the transformation from the JSON format into my platform specifics and opens a pull request, where you can still review all of your changes. So none of um, you won't figure the uh, situation um, where a change goes in unnoticed anymore. Of course, you could also go a step forward and implement this into your project as a library and really work with, with a versioning system here. And yeah. Okay, but what is now happening inside of this repository? I'm using the style dictionary from Amazon here. Uh, it uses transformers to modify um, the token so it can be understood by the platforms. Um, and the transformers are really platform specific. So if I need some different format for my iOS project than for Android, I can do this without affecting the other project. So my JSON file, which I just exported, is stored in this repository. And in my configuration, um, I specify the projects I want to support. Um, I can just use the transformers which are already shipped with this library or write my custom transformers if I need some special filtering or special handling for my, my product. Um, after that, I just need to um, register it in the style dictionary. I had to do this, for example, for my Android project because dimensions are expected to have a DP at the end of uh, all of my, of my values. So that's something which you would do also in here. Okay. And how does this now all look like in the apps? So that's my Android app, simple one with some title, image, some text and a button, still in the old blue color. I also can still see the old um, blue color values and now I run the update script. And as you can see, it already has the violet tones updated and after I run my app, everything is updated. The same also counts for the, the web project, um, because that's one of the uh, pros of such a system, that you can update all of your front-end applications pretty easily, and also everything updated. Okay. So, um, we talked now about reusable components, which are made up from tokens, and both are reused in design and my code base. We have one source of truth, um, where all my definitions are stored in, and all projects get it from there. But this topic is also a lot about a shared language and a collaboration and communication between designers and engineers, and how we can improve to work together by building bridges. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, you can reach out to me in one of those channels. Thank you.